All right, mathletes, so we have this problem here for you, and people are wondering, how do I find the perimeter of this triangle? And some of you are wondering, why is this triangle already filled out? I could just add all the sides. But what I'm saying is, what happens when the sides aren't given and they only give you the points? And the reason everything is filled out is because I did it again. So I recorded this whole video, but I forgot to record my screen. Uh, that's how excited I was, mathletes. Uh, so let me walk you through this process uh, so that you understand what is it that just went on here, right? So, because sometimes math classes, you ever doze off for like a second or you kind of daydream and then you look at the board and all of a sudden everything's done and you're like, what the heck just happened, right? So um, check this out. So what we're gonna do and what we're gonna need is if they give you these points, right, on uh, this graph, and they say these points make up a triangle, and what they want you to do is find the perimeter, the distance around that triangle. What you're gonna need is the distance formula, right? So this is our nice distance formula. And what's nice is it doesn't matter right here, these points are very nice in terms of the points that they gave us, right? Um, but sometimes the points aren't so nice. They might have square roots, right? They might have radicals. They might have a, a, might be decimals, right? So what happens uh, when they give you the points? And I can't necessarily count uh, as cleanly as I would in this example, right? So let me walk you through it. So what you're gonna do and what I did here is you take two points. So I took the point one, two, right? This point right here. And I called that my first point. So X1, Y1. Then I took my second point here negative two, negative two, and that's my second point. And, and so what I do is I plug them into my formula. So wherever I see x2, I'm plugging in negative two. Wherever I see x1, I'm plugging in one. And just be careful with your signs because a lot of people, they make that mistake with their signs. What's very nice about this is even if I accidentally switch the x1 and x2, when I square it, my answer is gonna be the same. So that's that's a nice thing about this formula in case we make a mistake. Y2 minus Y1, so Y2 is negative two minus Y1, which happens to be two. So I'm gonna take that and I'm, that quantity and I'm gonna square it, all right? So uh, we simplify, so we get negative three squared plus, and this becomes negative four squared. Negative three squared is nine, negative four squared is 16. So again, all we're doing is some arithmetic here and we're going to take the square root of 25 which is 5. So this represents the distance of this side that I called d1 and what I would do is I would do this uh, use the same exact formula the distance formula to find the distance of this side and I would call that maybe d2 and then I would use these two points right negative 2 2 and negative 2 negative 2 and find the distance of this side right here that I might call D3, all right? But again, if they give you a nice triangle like this, it does make sense to actually just count the number of units, all right? And so here I could have just counted one, two, three units. And that's in fact what I, what I did uh, in this case. But this one, I don't know exactly how many units, right? Because this isn't uh, on my horizontal scale or vertical scale. So again, I don't know this, uh, distance right here and some of you might be asking wait dr. math isn't this a right triangle if you had this distance and this distance couldn't you use the Pythagorean theorem to find this distance absolutely that's the beauty of math right as long as you take away you know the facts that you know there's gonna be multiple paths but for this example I'm saying what happens if we don't have all these nice scenarios well we could always go back and use our distance formula so again, to find the perimeter, and if you're given a triangle on a graph, I would use the distance formula, right, to find the lengths of those sides. And then once you have those lengths, we just add them all up. So in this case, we add up three plus five, which gives us eight plus four, and we get a total of 12 units for our perimeter. All right, Matthew, so hopefully, short little video, uh, but we saw a lot of mathletes out there uh, were asking this question, so we wanted to come to the rescue. All right, Matthew, so hopefully you found this video helpful. Make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe, and we'll see you next time in our next video. Peace.